We're back with the mobile command center, but today we're going to be working on the truck and not just the truck. We're working on the engine. So we have a massive engine block in this thing that we actually have a ton of room for that. We're going to put a three by three motor in this thing and we got to fix what's going on right now because it's actually glitching out as you can see. Now, all right, here we are with the awesome looking truck. The first thing we need to do is place down the radiator. So do we want this thing in the front of this thing? I don't know. I don't see why not here. Let's actually delete some of these random blocks here. OK, so we're going to have this thing be powered by a five by five radiator radiator so let's go ahead and where's the radiators at anyways i found it let's hope this will actually fit and oh we have a lot of room oh wow what a tanky looking radiator that is okay let's go ahead and actually fill up the blocks behind it see if it kind of looks good i would say that doesn't look too bad and of course we're gonna paint it like the color of the truck so we'll barely be even able to see it when it's actually you know there now that we got the radiator done we're time for the engine so let's just go ahead and type in modular we get a couple options here we're gonna go to the modular engine three by three crankshaft all right and we need a decent amount of room for this so we're gonna play a couple blocks here because we don't exactly know what level we're going to do this on still and i'd say we have the best luck putting the modular engine stuff right here and this is like actually wait hold on is this going to get in the way of the drive terrain um it might a little bit it should be fine though okay so we got the engine done we're going to make this a two cylinder and you guys might be thinking that's like really small but with this type of engine that is going to be more than enough so we're going to go ahead and put two cylinders completely side by side like this and we got a little bit of extra room up here that i did leave for some important reasons so this is going to be the engine belt which is also a three by three it's a pretty large piece of equipment i'm not gonna lie and we're gonna equip a ton of starters on this thing and a whole bunch of different areas on it so just in case some get broken so we're gonna have starters on the top and bottom of this thing there we go just like that awesome and it's a little bit concerning on how the starters are hanging that low out of the engine so you know what we might just completely block off this bottom area for that exact reason and we're gonna block it off with weight blocks so we can have this area be somewhat armored we're gonna do pink for now obviously just because you know it's easier to see and now we can put even more starters on the side on the bottom right here and then the next thing we need is an alternator and this will kind of just spin the engine and collect some electricity from it i don't know yeah we'll do just do something like that the next thing we need for this engine is cooling so we're gonna go and grab ourselves a cooling manifold here and this will help the engine basically cool itself i don't think it matters which direction we put these uh, as long as they're connected to the radiator and have some type of flow to them so what we're gonna do is actually color code this we're gonna have blue be the coolant color because that just makes more sense and we're gonna connect everything all up here and we actually need an impeller pump that'll basically help this thing flow way better so here we go this is a perfect area for an impeller pump we're gonna grab the super super small one here and this will kind of help uh turbo it, you know make it go fast all right so this side is named fluid in this side is named fluid out so we're just gonna connect these and there we go they're all basically connected and then we have some rps things back here we're just gonna have the rps lines just be completely white and these will connect directly up to the engine and okay we got to do a couple more things for that also so we're gonna delete our entire like frame right here because that was just basically for looks we're going to type in modular and we're going to get some things we're going to grab a three by three um clutch here i think that's actually what we will need and then what else do we need here and this is the exact area right here where we'll probably have like some what's it called flywheels yeah so we're gonna have some flywheels we're gonna type in modular again and then we'll go ahead and grab a one by one clutch and i think you face them this way i don't remember and then we're gonna go grab a flywheel is there any flywheels oh gosh we have to manually type it in oh wait no we got some right here okay so here's some of the flywheels we will be using that is going to be our flywheels you know we'll set some more because why not but now it's actually time for the transmission so let's go ahead and grab some gearboxes here um i don't know what type of transmission we're going to be doing should we grab three by threes dude these things are giant i really don't know holy crap that's big i mean we can use three by threes but i think for now we're just going to be using a one by one gearbox because it's super compact and you know it's easier to repair so we're going to want a ton of torque in the beginning so we're just going to face all the gearboxes basically that way and we're going to make this a one two three three four five maybe even six speed i don't know why not and then past that end it'll connect directly to the wheels so we can just angle this straight down and now we can actually make the drive terrain for this thing so let's go ahead and grab a pipe and we're going to grab a t-piece pipe and it's going to face two directions this is so it can actually connect to the front wheel base right here oh crap okay we're going to make it go down more there we go perfect okay so now it can actually go under the engine and it will be able to go directly back there amazing look at that and then of course we'll have to all connect it up here once um we get this thing running okay so we have coolant done we have almost basically the transmission system done oh yeah that's right we have to connect this pipe here to the uh impeller pump we just did so as you can see there's definitely not enough room here so we're gonna have to kind of make it go a little zigzag and then just like this this pipe is gonna connect directly to the rps thing we just made back here we're gonna just line this all the way back because we don't want it to get in the way of this uh coolant manifold or whatever that is and just like that this thing is now basically done with cooling now we need to no, now we got to think of a 
air. So air should be pretty easy. What we're going to do is use these manifolds right here. So we're going to go ahead and type in manifold just like that. And now we have an air engine manifold. And this is exactly how this thing's actually going to be able to basically breathe. Yeah, this thing does need air. And I don't exactly know if we should supercharge this thing. I think we're going to hold off on doing that for now. But we're going to put the air intake pretty close to the radiator here. And it should be fine if it gets damaged. It really shouldn't damage anything at all. Okay, and then right here, we will make it just angle completely straight upwards and grab a fluid port end. And this should actually make it a little bit better than having any type of air filter. But that will actually clog the engine if water gets in it. So we will have to figure out a system for that. But I think we're done with air for now. Now we got to deal with, uh, let's see, we're going to deal with fuel next. So we're going to go grab a fuel manifold. And we're going to connect fuel to this top one right here. You might be thinking, why the top one? Uh, EL definitely see. So let's go ahead and rotate it like this. And wait, it can't be placed on this. Oh, crap. Yeah, okay. So that'll definitely be an issue. I think we have to angle it upwards then and then have it angle out. And we're going to make the fuel color orange because that's just, I like color coding like that. And it'll go straight into our control system. That's going to be an issue. Then as you can see, I lined it through here and it's actually going down like a little side panel. And right here, it'll basically turn. Um, you know, we'll just keep the orange color because why not? Wait, and here we are in the giant little fuel tank area. And we have these three just ginormous fuel tanks that'll fuel this thing. That should definitely not be an issue. And actually, we're going to have it turn right here so it can just kind of fit in here a little bit better. So it'll angle that way and then it'll actually angle down. Awesome. And then from here, we're just going to be using random pipes. So we're going to have a pipe right there. This pipe will keep it angled so it can continue going in this direction. And this is just working out actually quite perfectly. So we can just go down a good old line here. So here will be our fuel lines. This should not be able to get damaged. And if these fuel tanks do get hit by like a bomb or something, they will not leak. And that's the good part about them. So now we have fuel done, but I kind of want to pump for the fuel. Um, I feel like that might be a bad idea, though, because if that pump goes up, we're definitely going to be screwed. But we definitely need a pump for the exhaust. So now we are on the exhaust one. We're having two exhaust manifolds. Let's type in exhaust and we get this one right here. We're just going to angle it straight down and it should not get in the way of anything. And then as you can see, even on both sides, I left a little bit of a crevice right here that the exhaust could just squeeze through to get to the back. Uh, uh, we got to go around something and we're going to do the same thing we basically did with the fuel line here, but line it completely side by side next to it. And the thing is with the exhaust, I don't want it to get in the way of the control center because we can very easily see exhaust from the inside of it. We can't push the exhaust upwards because that'll definitely make that 10 times worse. So I think we have to push it out to the side of this thing or even below it. And we're going to try doing both. And would you look at that? We can put a fluid port right there. That kind of looks dumb, though, because it's glitched in the tire, but it definitely works. Now we have to figure out a way to line this exhaust thing right here to the exhaust. And that's really easy. And just like that, we have the exhaust connected. But now we need an actual pump for it that will not get destroyed in two seconds, because if the exhaust pump breaks, that's done. -zo. And an option we can do is to basically supercharge the exhaust. Oh, I still think that's kind of a bad idea, but I mean, it'll work. So let's go ahead and type in impeller pump. Yep, that's what we're looking for. Another impeller pump. Uh, all right, this game's probably tired of me spawning these in. Okay, that's RPS. And we got to make sure this is fluid in right here. Oh, crap. Okay, well, this area right here is actually pretty armored. We could do one, two, three. Oh, that'll perfectly work. Yes, that is enough room for a pump. And this area is like extremely armored. I'm not going to say extremely, but it is really armored. So uh, it should not get destroyed. There we go. Now we got pumps for the exhaust. I think we got everything. Air, fuel, exhaust. And I don't know what else an engine has, but I think we got everything. Now it's time for the actual microcontroller. So we're going to be typing in modular and we're going to be using the ZE modular engine microcontroller right here. All right. Amazing. And then where are we putting the logic at in this thing? Oh, yeah, that's right. Right below the cab, I think. OK, before we start putting really important computers in this thing, we got to armor it a little bit. So I'm going to go to the bottom of this thing and just grab a ton of these pink weight blocks and line some weight blocks on the bottom. And hopefully this will kind of help armor this thing. It definitely should. So we're going to do that. And you know what? Should we just do it all the way through? Uh, why not? These things in total weigh 36,000. That's actually really insane. From the bottom of this thing, this thing really looks electric. That's how armored we armored this thing, which is like honestly pretty impressive. But we're going to paint that that color, even though this thing will not be pink, guys. I'm just letting you know we're not going to have leave this pink. We'll probably color in a different video. But all right, it looks somewhat armored in here, which is good. That's what we want. Now we're going to make it even more armored. So we're going to grab ourselves a robotic pivot here. And you guys probably already know what I'm doing. We're putting all of our logic on an entirely different subgrid. Uh, well, not all of it, but we'll definitely try because I don't think this is enough room for the logic we're going to put in this thing because I think we're going to have some pretty insane crap in this. So we're going to fill it all up here. Uh, don't not with weight blocks, though. Oh, not to the ceiling either. And we got to merge it in. And if it's a different subgrid, that means it cannot be spread from the different subgrid. So let's just say um, a gun hits this pink area right here. Actually, it's purple. It cannot spread to this other one. That's why I'm doing this little subgrid thing. Dang, this engine's 
just looks so sick. Okay, so let's go and grab the ZE modular engine controller that we already have here. It's a fairly large one, so it's going to take up a decent amount of space here. And wait a second. I don't... Oh, wow. The sides are not armored at all on this thing. Okay, so we're going to grab even more weight blocks and make it a little bit thicker on these sides. You know, we got to have some type of armor so the bullet doesn't go through. Okay, I think that's good enough. We've made it two blocks thick of pure armor, and then there's just another little panel on the outside. Let's hope this is enough room to actually stuff microcontrollers in here. I'm going to guess it is. So we're going to slam our ZE1 exactly right there. And first thing we're going to do is connect composite to both cylinders. And wait, hold on. I just realized. Oh, crap. Wait, do we have to connect the cylinders? I don't think we do because they're like on the same thing. I, I mean, we're definitely going to find out. And if we do, that's actually kind of concerning because sometimes you have to connect the cylinders with like the manifold thing. But I really hope we don't. Oh, I think we might, though. OK, let's just cross our fingers. We won't. Uh, crankshaft RPS is going to connect to the crankshaft. We're going to have the back. You know what? We're going to connect everything to the back one because this back one here is actually safer and probably won't get damaged. Oh my gosh, that is so smart. And then we're going to go ahead and connect uh, the starter to all four of our engine starters. We have some of those as backups, even though they're going to be helping us start either way. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Air manifold. Yes, this is important. And we got the air manifolds right here in the front. And then the next one is our fuel, which is super easy because we got two of them right there. All right. And then the next buttons we need are all basically buttons we need inside of this thing. Let's go and cut customize this thing we're gonna go um 25 on throttle one and we're gonna do three on throttle zero we're gonna do air to fuel ratio all right so this seat right here will be our driver we need the key button to start this thing that we're gonna put uh right there why not all right so we're gonna type in key button and this will start the entire thing up and you better hope that key button never breaks because if it does it'll cause some issues so we're gonna connect the key button to the radiator and the on and off button and then the throttle desired throttle will go straight to the w and s on the seat here awesome and then also, before we start this thing up, I want a, a way that we can open this entire engine hood area, and that'll also make it pretty armored if we have it like that. So what we're going to do is put like two extremely strong robotic pivots here. Oh, wow. This is a really big breaching point that a bullet could go right through. Anyways, we're going to put two robotic pivots right on the front of this thing, and this should swing open, basically open this thing to the sides, not the front. It'll swing open towards the front. So for that to work, we're going to just cut off the entire front of this thing, paste that, and then connect all the other rest of the stuff. And what I'm doing right now is just cutting and pasting. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff we actually have to merge in. Uh, we got to do that here in a bit. All right, so we basically got this thing cut out. We're going to merge it into these robotic pivots here, all just like that. It's so satisfying when doing this part. Oh yeah, there we go. All right, so I think we got everything all done. We're going to go grab ourselves a throttle here. Of course, we're going to switch this to a button, but we got to figure out if this will actually even open. We're going to do minimum value, reverse one, and we're going to delete this one on the other side. I just realized we need a battery for this thing. Oh crap, that's going to be annoying. And then we're going to make these robotics turn on a more uh, reinforced 1 to 16 here, and that should make it more strong. But all right, let's go ahead and test this out, see if we can actually open our engine in this thing if we have a breakdown or something. So, um, oh God. Yeah, this thing's already having issues, but um, let's go ahead and turn on infinite electric because I won't work without it. And let's see, we're opening the engine right. Awesome. That's actually exactly what we want, dude. That's awesome. Okay, I actually like this. And we can see the engine in here and basically do everything we need. Uh, we got to make sure it doesn't take that part because that is no longer waterproof oh that just looks so cool though okay let's go ahead and fix some things oh it didn't even take that part it just completely we didn't even put anything there okay done just opening the engine up i feel like this looks like a pretty dinky engine i might replace some of these pipes with actual like uh filled in pipes because these just look really skinny but let's go ahead and actually start this thing up i think we got everything done that we need let's see if we can get an engine started on the first try so let's turn up our volume here and here we go uh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, yep, we're up. Yes, finally, we got an engine starting on the first try and infinite fuel is off. Oh my gosh, that's actually amazing. So this thing does actually work. Let's go down here and see if the flywheels are actually spinning because that's also kind of important. Um, No, they're not actually, I've just realized. Oh yeah, because the clutch is not. Anyways, let's go ahead and add all the clutch and transmission, then we'll be done with this. Okay, now we have an up and down transmission uh, microcontroller that I took from one of my old builds. Oh gosh, this thing is ginormous. Okay, transmission is important important though so we're definitely gonna put it in here oh wow this thing is just giant it's still going all the way till the end over here oh wait no it's not what all right so let's go ahead and click up and down from the seat um up and down signal so this will be a completely automatic uh, i meant a manual truck which is fine i like manuals more and then the first gear will be connected to the first gear that's somewhere so all we have to do is go down the line so that's the first gear and then this will be the second gear 
third gear, fourth gear, and then uh, the, we have fifth and then the reverse one and then reverse done. Then of course we cannot forget to gear the engine. So ratio off. Hold on, I think I kind of forgot how to do this. So we're gonna do five to two on this one. You know, we'll do five to two on the second one and then maybe we'll do the one that's not five to two on this one. Cause like, why not? Okay, then the next one will be not two to one. It'll go nine to five. And then we have an output here, which we're gonna put in a dial. And this will just say what current gear that we're actually in. So we're gonna put our current gear. We'll just do right here for now. Actually, that seems like a dumb spot. All right, that should be done. And then the last thing I think we need is the clutch for these engines here. And the clutch microcontroller perfectly fits right here. We're gonna go ahead and connect everything up. So this is the clutch right here. And we're gonna connect uh, both the clutches cause why not? And then throttle, we'll go straight to WNS cause that's our throttle obviously. And then what is the other stuff? RPS, okay, that's easy. Uh, we'll grab that engine. And we got everything all connected. Performance, I don't know what that means. We've never known what that means. We're gonna go on here and do uh, some things. All right, and we should be good in this regard. Let's go verify cause I wanna get this all right in the first try. That's just the best feeling ever. Okay, so we actually don't have it connected to the wheels. We're gonna do that right now. So this is pretty easy. All we need to do is grab a T-piece pipe. So pipe, and this will go both ways, just like this. We have to paint it pink. We'll do that later. And then that'll connect straight to the wheels. Easy enough, and we gotta do this a lot more times. Awesome, I think we got everything connected. Let's spawn this in, test it out, see if we can actually drive this thing. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, so ready to go in here. Turn on transmission and stalling. Oh, oh, that's a good sign. I didn't even shift up, so I don't know how exactly we're doing this. Um, I think the engine's run away. I, I'm not throttling. Oh, yeah, I am. Okay, the transmission, I don't think it's working, though. I'm shifting down or up right now. I don't even know what to do, but why are we like not doing what it's I'm asking? Okay, well, first thing we need to do is actually make brakes for this thing because this thing's going kind of fast. And we're going to be using an interesting braking system for this. We're going to put this at the way back right here. And that's actually a pretty, actually, that's not safe at all, really. Oh gosh, I just realized if we get shot from right here, all of our logic is probably screwed, but uh, we're going to use a threshold here. And then we'll have a button that actually activates the brakes. So brake right there. We're going to have all wheel brakes because um, do they do that in real life? All wheel brakes? <laughs> yeah, I really hope they do because that'd be kind of weird if they didn't and then we'll connect a w and s also to our braking system right here and then if it's within the threshold it'll automatically activate the brakes we gotta name it brakes and then we can't forget about steering this thing obviously needs steering as you saw earlier we're gonna go to a and d on our truck thing here and then this will go to steering and steering and one of these has to be inverted i don't know which one but let's go ahead and find out so we're gonna go in here not start anything yet um please work okay we're gonna go in here turn we're turning right right now oh god yes yeah, so the left one needs to be inverted and i also just got the transmission working that's amazing reverse okay we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing on we go and we do have steering and brakes now so let's go ahead test the brakes uh it does work they're really slow though brakes have been fixed now i can click s and activate them here we go all right start this thing up um i don't know how we're driving in the zeroth gear but all right we're gonna go ahead and shift up all right we're shifted up in fifth and oh god okay we have wheel spin like immediately when we start driving i really don't like that but um oh wow this thing's not loud at all oh my gosh okay turn it down calm it down i mean we can drift pretty good i'm gonna xml the grip on these tires uh wait should i do that right now oh god we just jackknifed oh that's not good oh this thing's crazy oh we're actually taking a whole bunch of oh that does not look good at all oh god okay so we just xml the grip and now it should be xml let's see how good the grip is now we should not have any type of tire sp oh Oh, look at our tires. I think we fixed the issue. Oh my gosh, look, they're not in the ground anymore. Oh my God, okay, I think we fixed all the issues in this thing. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead, turn this on. Look at the wheels, they're not spinning. And now we're gonna shift up. Oh my gosh, guys, I think I built the bet. Oh, oh God. Oh, okay, we cannot do high speed turns and it's just broken and disconnected. I don't think the trailer is even connected with us anymore. Definitely some things we have to fix, but we got the driving down. I don't know how the trailer is still even attached to us. Here, let's drive this thing in the water. Why not? And we're gonna see if it's watertight. Uh, no guarantees though. There's, uh, oh, I already see a big old leak right here. That's our pump. Yeah, this thing's gonna sink. But I cannot believe we actually got this thing working. Oh, we're drifting. We're Hitting some drift. Oh, this thing's just completely destroyed. Oh no. But uh, our logic should not be des destroyed. Yep. As you can see, our logic's completely fine. We're going to put the steering or the seat on a different subgrid also. But guys, we got driving done in this episode slash video. Dude, that was awesome. We got this thing finally working and the wheels aren't glitching in the ground. But let me know what we should add next to the actual truck right here down in the comments. I'm going to definitely put all those things in a to do list to things to add. But if you haven't already, be sure to go to enjoy the Discord. But I appreciate all you guys for watching till the end and goodbye.